Hi, and welcome to this screencast on setting up your own Glassfish update server. In this short screencast, I'll show you how to install a Glassfish IPS publisher inside your company network with content obtained from the My Oracle support portal. I'll show you how to configure existing installs of Glassfish to use this publisher, but also install a brand new instance directly from scratch. Oracle Glassfish server is built on top of the open source edition, and it adds a number of production add-ons. And of course, it is a supported product. You can download this from uh, glassfish.java.net or get this straight from Oracle Technology Network. These are evaluation licenses, and you can download the full bits, including the add-ons from this tab right here. And in our case, we'll be using Oracle Glassfish Server 3.0.1. This is a version we have already installed. And we actually have Glassfish already uh, running as shown here. This is the admin console. Notice it says Oracle Glassfish Server. And what we'll do now is go to the update tool. And the update tool will actually go to all the configured repositories or publishers and scan for new updates. So it might take a while talking to those um, repositories and eventually it will come back with all the versions of the plugins that you can either add as new ones or update because a new version was made available. And we have no updates here. And you can look at the config configuration and specifically the repositories. So this is what we want to change to have it not go out on the internet looking for updates, but rather go to a internal website. And for that, we'll actually shut down Glassfish. We don't want to be making updates to the server itself while it's running. So now that it's stopped, we'll actually use the update tool, which is something you can use when Glassfish is not running. And in a very similar fashion, it will show you all the um, repositories that are configured, which one is the preferred. And of course, you can browse through all the packages that are installed. You can look at the files, the dependencies, the license, all of that, obviously. So um, before we can change anything, we need to grab the content of the update center from support.oracle.com. This is my Oracle support or MOS. And you can search for Glass 3, Glassfish 301 patches. I have uh, saved the requ um, a request previously. Um, and what we're interested in here is the Linux version of it. So if you know, obviously, the patch name, you can just search for that. So we'll download this. This is a 266 megabyte download. This has all the packages um, that come as part of Glassfish 301 that you can now be running inside your uh, own corporation. So I have downloaded this ahead of time. And um, so while we have the data, we need a server to serve that data. And the server is something that is uh, well documented in the administration guide of Glassfish. This is the official documentation of Glassfish, um, which goes through all the steps you need to install um, such a server. And one of those steps is to actually go and download the um, uh, toolkit images. So a toolkit image is something uh, that is worth four megabytes and that can serve you either as a client or a server to talk to um, IPS publishers. IPS is a technology for the entire update center infrastructure. So while you have that downloaded, you can start a depot um, showing which directory it will be serving data from and which port it'd be using. In our case, this is port 3000. And so the server is running. And now you can check that by going to uh, that port 3000 and see that we have 244 packages. So you can see all the packages and you can actually have multiple versions of these. Um, and you can browse through them and eventually you could go and look at the manifest for each and every one of them. So while we have now a server running, we can have Glassfish installs pointing to that um, new repository, which we have defined internally in our company. So this is on localhost, but it could be on any machine listening on port 3000. And 
I want to make this the preferred repository or publisher. And I'll actually uh, disable all the other ones so that I will never try to go outside uh, the firewall. So now if I look at um, the available add-ons, I see that there's a number of them and these are all from the source that is the new one uh, recently created, which is the internal Glassfish repository. So this was all done using a graphical tool. Let's go now to using a command line tool on a machine that has nothing installed except those um, the bootstrap toolkit. Um, using the pkg command, I can list install packages. And again, this is just a bootstrap, this four megabytes. Uh, I can list, uh, I can define a new publisher, which will be preferred, enabled and available from this location, still local host port 3000, and give it a name and call it internal glassfish repository. So once this is done, I can list the publishers and see that I have my new publisher as the preferred, but also an older one, which in this case I will disable so that I don't go um, outside the firewall looking for updates. I can also list all the remote packages that are available for install. And there's a, a good number of them, and certainly all the packages for Glassfish 3.0.1 are there. I can grab for the web profile because this is what I want to install rather than a long list of individual packages. And I'll install the Glassfish Enterprise web profile package. And because this has a number of dependencies on um, 32 packages, uh, I'll have 45 megabytes worth of uh, packages installed in this single command. And at this point I have Glassfish installed and I do have access to the asadmin command in the bin directory next to the pkg we used previously. And this is build uh, 22 of Glassfish 3.0.1. I need to create a domain using port base 9000 and I'll call the domain domain one and use all the defaults. And once the domain is created, I can start that domain. So the domain uh, will be uh, serving pages on port 9080 and listening to administrative commands on 9048. So I can go to a browser and go to localhost port 9048, wait for the admin console to start. Notice that this is uh, the same version, Oracle Glassfish Server 301. And we can go to the update tool. And the update tool will um, show um, no available add-ons at this point. But if you go to the install components, you see that the source for, for the Glassfish components is this new um, repository or publisher we've installed uh, called internal Glassfish repository. You can also imagine having your own repositories with your own packages, such as popular frameworks you use inside the company. So the content for the Glassfish publisher for 3.0.1, as well as all the patches that are released to supported customers are available from MOS or my Oracle support. All the steps to install an internal uh, Glassfish update server are documented here in the administration guide of Glassfish. If you're interested in more uh, differences between the open source bits and the Oracle Glassfish supported server, I'd encourage you to go to the Glassfish for Business blog, which has more details on the commercial offerings from Oracle. Thank you for watching this screencast. Download Glassfish and send us your feedback.